somebody else who's in the room, Jody Hickey. Um, because I desperately needed some good frame, some fringe that I had, and Joby sent me to some shop in Fibsborough. Um, and I ended up, I remember it very bizarre. A lot has happened in between that I've forgotten, but I remember very clearly driving up, and there was an outhouse beside a park, and there was Ken, and uh, he brought me in. And I remember two things very clearly uh, about this, this experience of going in through the framing. The first was that he had a big, beautiful, bounding dog. Still that have. Kept me all over me. And the second was that against a wall, as I was showing Ken, and he was showing very expertly all these different frames that might work, and there was this picture. I was forgetting instantly the prints that I was getting framed. I was very intrigued by this picture, mesmerized by it. Um, it had all these levels of landscape, and um, I was intrigued as to what it was. And Ken brought me into the second room, and there were on its on the walls of the second room were all the siblings of this painting, and they were all by Ken. And I, I just thought he was a framer, and then discovered that in fact I wanted his paintings. Um, and the work that we have here is such a development from that work then. But what it shares essentially is an honesty about the paintings. These are layers of memories because, as I understand it, Ken's practice is not to take any photographs. Of, of places. I mean, obviously, this is Ireland's landscape, but he doesn't take photographs. He goes, he, he, he is in a place, and then he goes home. Um, one of my favourites is a picture here called November Shore. Um, and Ken, I think, grew up beside the sea yeah. and then um, moved in. And this, these are the, kind of the mists, the sea mists coming in. But he would have painted this very much from memory. It's worth, it's a beautiful picture. It's worth looking at again when you think of the sea mists and the layers on it. And the, the graphite on it. And in this exhibition, which is interesting because um, I'm sure Ken will probably speak about the intricacies no. of it. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, one of the interesting, uh, we, we obviously have a lot of work, large works on canvas, but the smaller works are painted on this extraordinary paper called Fabiana, which is then on, placed on, on board so that they have a different depth entirely to the canvases and they're, they're worth exploring as well. Um, my understanding of, of Ken's work is, is these landscapes that are both the landscapes that we all know. Um, somebody once described his skies as being Turner-esque. I think that's probably only true if Turner spent some time in Mayo mm. exploring the skies there, <laughs> because they, they, these are distinctly Irish skies, and, and there's no denying the Irishness of these landscapes. Um, and if you'll indulge me a moment, I had a week of thinking of Seamus Heaney when I was thinking of, she of, of mm -hmm. Ken's work. I mean, there are obviously other artists that come to mind, but for some reason, I was thinking of Seamus Heaney's understanding of the inner landscapes that we all have and, and how that they can become outer landscapes. Um, and I then got in the post, which I might read from from this book, uh, so it's the Poetry Ireland, um, uh, Seamus Heaney, it's a special edition. And I was thinking of the way that he and Ken understand the Irish mind and how it relates to the landscape and what it contains and what the landscape contains. So if you will indulge me, I will read just, it's a short poem. It's um, from, from the Glanmore Sonnets, and it's uh, sonnets, and it's number five. Um, and I'm not Chantini, so I can't read it as well as Chantini can. But um, soft corrugations in the boar tree's trunk. It's green young shoots. It's rod like freckled soldier. It was our bower as children, a greenish, dank, and snapping memory as I get older. An elderberry I have learned to call it. I love its blooms like saucers brimmed with meal, its berries a swart caviar of shot, a buoyant spawn, a light bruised out of purple. Elderberry, it is shire as dreaming wine. Or tree, it's bower tree, where I played touching tongues and I felt another's texture quick on mine. So, etymologist of roots and graftings, I fall back to my treehouse and wood crouch, where small buds shoot and flourish in the hush. And I think there's something of yeah. the landscape of, of Heaney that you have captured, which to me is the highest praise I could give you. <laughs> <laughs> that the title which is 90 degrees in view and 90 degrees is an acute angle it's a right angle but also a, an acute angle and i think we should take a right angle when we're looking at things but an acute angle is i would never describe this as an acute angle it's an angle everything viewed through a, a beautiful haze rather than anything sharp and jagged so mm -hmm. that's my <laughs> 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 <laughs>